Um, Tammy and Morgan are going to talk a little bit about retreat and retreat lifestyle, doing it at home with kids, doing it with a partner, or doing it solitary. Um, and the background, they just came out five months ago at a three-year, three-month, three-day retreat, which is a typical Tibetan style of doing retreat. So we're going to share a little bit tonight. Um, and feel free to ask any questions at the end. to compassion, many retreats in the home. I think we all can agree that we go into a spiritual retreat to become more compassionate in our thoughts, words, and actions because we recognize that we are all interdependent. If we think we're independent, we're blind to the context in which we live. If we're going to learn compassion, what better place is there than to do it in our own home? Not only is it cost effective, but more importantly, it allows us to do our spiritual work at the nexus of our larger networking interrelations. It supports a kind of ground zero or distraction-free zone in the sense that it can foster more genuine and honest reflections and interactions. If we can't look closely at ourselves with our family or our roommates, how can we expect positive outcomes that can be brought into a larger network of job or community? We were asked to specifically address this question of doing a retreat with another person versus solitary. A solitary retreat seems like a misnomer. Even when you do a retreat in a private room or cabin at a retreat center, you are not alone. There are those who cook your meals, those who bring cook your cooked meals to you, or you will be sharing dining tables with others, those who, and there'll be those who you share walkways with, and in some cases you may even have to share showers and bathrooms. We are never alone doing anything on our own without the help of others. And if we think we are alone doing something on our own, then we are not thinking of others and if we're not thinking of others, then how can we begin benefiting them through our thoughts, words, and actions? And at the very least, even if we continue, continue to think of ourselves as solitary or independent entities, and we're sitting alone in retreat, if we're doing a spiritual practice, our partner will be our spiritual guide whether it is our guide is God, Jesus, the Buddha, and the teachings that they embody. 
And if we're following retreat advices of a trusted spiritual advisor, whether a priest, a rabbi, or a lama, then we will be bringing them into retreat with us as well. So we're never really alone in that sense. So a truly solitary retreat is questionable. We are always partnered with someone at any given moment, whether it is our dog, our wife, our roommate, or the noisy neighbor next door, or God. I guess we can say the goal, the fruit of a spiritual practice, is to partner at any given moment with someone other than ourselves. We become then partners in compassion. And this nicely segues into another question we were asked to address tonight. Logistics of family life in doing a retreat. Many retreats can be done with families with children. If we think about it, what really is the difference between a family vacation, let's say at the beach, and a retreat? Activities, right? So why not take a spiritual vacation with your family? <laughs> why not turn your vacation into a powerful, liberating practice? And to, do, and to help us do this, we are so blessed. There are so many spiritual books and activity books available today for children, teens, and young adults that make setting up activities for them very easy. They will need scheduled quiet activities and physical activities and can use whisper voices to foster a spiritual milieu. Adults can share or take turns supervising younger children. Older children can use adults as role models. And when setting up a retreat schedule, be creative and flexible in meeting retreat goals. And this includes for a retreat even without children. Okay. Um, and also don't forget to schedule naps and going to bed and getting up the same time every day. And don't forget that not everyone is a late bird or an early bird, so set a schedule that meets their needs. Okay. Children have different propensities, and so do we as adults, so this applies to adults as well. Um, therefore, age-appropriate activities directed at spiritual goals or concepts include not only formal contemplations or prayer, but also singing and chanting, repeating the same concept, chanting is like re repeating the same concept over and over again, dancing, walking, reading, writing, or transcribing, memorizing, storytelling, listening, and arts and crafts are perfect for children in retreat, and adults too. <coughs> A movie night directed at a particular spiritual concept is also appropriate and can help foster genuine concern for others. So we go into retreat, whether it's with another person, a roommate, boyfriend, girlfriend, or a friend, or our family to, to decrease distractions and create favorable conditions which will increase our concentration, clarity, and wisdom. In a spiritual retreat, we study, contemplate, analyze, and synthesize important texts or scriptures. Once we are clear on the intended meaning of the text, we put into practice what we learn to benefit ourselves and others. A scheduled retreat then gives us, oh, excuse me, I skipped. The freedom of retreat comes from following a daily schedule where all activities are scheduled. The schedule frees the mind of the details of planning what to do or not do next. 
it's key. The schedule frees the mind of the details of planning what to do or not do next. This results in an open and spacious feeling. A scheduled retreat then gives us the time and space to study and digest important text over and over again while increasing our best understanding, our wisdom, and our compassion. In other words, concentrated, con concentrated contemplation actually works in that the questions that arise in contemplation spur on further study and further study spurs on concentrated contemplation, making two supporting spirals when trying to make sense of the practice and goals of a particular teaching. From a practical standpoint, there may be spiritual texts that we don't completely understand at first, and that's okay. Yeah. And But with the continued efforts, the meaning becomes more apparent as our background, knowledge, and experience increase. We're going to briefly outline the retreat basics so that anyone who is planning a retreat, especially a spiritual mini retreat, can do it in their home. Organizing and planning your retreat is next to the most important thing you can do besides doing the retreat yourself. Given the context of most people's working lives, many retreats can be planned over weekends, starting Friday night and ending on Sunday night. They can be planned during four-day holidays, and finally during two-week vacation. A 10-day retreat is realistic. It's best to start off slowly, building from that, so doing even a half-day or one-day mini retreat can be beneficial. And more importantly, will act as a springboard for longer and longer retreats in the future, like we eventually end up in. <laughs> Getting started. Because of family and social commitments, retreats should be planned far in advance. In addition, some questions you will have to answer in the planning phases are, what are your retreat goals? How will doing this retreat benefit others? What text will you study? What practices will you follow? What schedule would you like to follow? When planning a retreat, be kind. Don't overbook yourself. We want to relax into retreat. And in general, your retreat schedule should resemble a grain of rice, less intense at the start, more intense in the middle, and less again at the end. Having your retreat days scheduled before you start a retreat will help prevent possible distractions while promoting a worry-free retreat. <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> if you are not sure about what to practice and study while on retreat, seek the advice of a trusted spiritual advisor. A very general retreat schedule, for example, would include alternating periods of study and contemplation or prayer. Also be sure to include meal times, bedtimes, exercise, showers, and chores on your schedule. Your schedule should not feel grueling, otherwise you will not feel motivated to do another retreat. <laughs> Being in retreat takes effort, but is also joyful because of our intentions. So make sure you schedule some free time each day after meals to relax and sit quietly. What is a silent retreat? One definition of a silent retreat is we are silencing our regular routines and outside activities in favor of study, contemplation, and practice. So talking in retreat is appropriate if focused on retreat goals. When making a schedule in silent times, schedule in silent times for contemplation and prayer and times for discussion of key concepts. Another definition of silent retreat is a retreat where there's no talking at all. We didn't succeed at that a whole lot. <laughs> Written notes are used sparingly to communicate. Many people will not take a silent retreat 
because they feel they would die if they could not speak at all. <laughs> so starting off with smaller periods of not speaking would be helpful. Practice before you get there. Periods of no talking are beneficial in that they help increase our concentration. During periods of concentration, we can use awareness, which will give glimpses into the reality of what is going on in our minds. Also, silence fosters discipline in a sense, in that we don't do our habitual knee-jerk reactions to situations that arise. And we found that some of the things I was studying, Tammy would be dreaming. And then we discussed what her dreams were. It's kind of interesting. Right. And we offered that um, first alternative uh, definition of silence, because I think it's important that um, if you're afraid to take a silent retreat, if that's what the teacher has instructed, you may want to talk to them about um, um, the possibility of having purposeful speech in a retreat. So then at least you're going on retreat rather than having the silent retreat be an obstacle to going on retreat. Also keep in mind that our retreat enemies are not the noisy neighbor next door or an unexpected event, such as a kitchen sink leaking and needing the attention of a repairman, but our, our own mental afflictions. In retreat, we want to utilize every situation, see it as an opportunity to practice compassion. Family, friends, and neighbors. Let family and friends know why you won't be answering the door, returning phone calls or emails, or doing communications like Facebook. Depending on your relationship with your neighbors and length of retreat, you may also want to let neighbors know what you are doing. One of the hardest things to do is to leave the extended family over the long holiday weekends. So explaining that the holiday is a natural break from work, the goals of your retreat, and how it benefits them for you to be on retreat is most helpful. And be creative, be flexible. For example, they could remain involved by dropping off turkey dinner plates on your doorstep <laughs> on Thanksgiving. <laughs> In addition, some of you may have concerns about leaving your extended family or them being concerned about being gone for a week, two weeks, or a month. Think of ways to get them involved. For example, extended family can shop and deliver groceries to support your retreat. <laughs> Although they would not see or talk to you until a retreat end, it would give them great satisfaction in knowing that they have helped you. They will know that they, you are okay, that you will be bringing in the groceries after they leave, and you will be enjoying them. And finally, to keep the extended family involved, another alternative would be to ask them to go on retreat with you. <laughs> <laughs> Unplugging your home. Besides saying goodbye to family and friends for a while, Unplugging your home is the next hardest thing you will have to do. You will need to clear away anything that is not in line with retreat goals. This includes turning off or unplugging the phone, close or cover TV cabinets, turn off computer, put away electronic games, and remove anything else, including books and magazines, that are not in line with the retreat. In addition, windows can be a distraction if we can see what's going on outside the home. For windows facing common walkways or streets, close the blinds or slant them downward narrowly to allow light while not allowing full view of outside. You can also close the blinds and then carefully adjust the top slats so that light can enter. Cafe style curtains, or if you have wooden blinds that rise from the bottom up, also work since they allow light in from the top while providing privacy. All right, so on our retreat, um, our back windows, that faced, um, we were on a hill in Kentucky, a rural Kentucky, so we were eight miles from every, everyone, um, from houses and things, and we just had cows and <laughs> <laughs> animals. But basically, because the back of the house faced the um, pasture and trees, we left the back windows open, but the front windows that faced the the um, uh, road. road, we actually kept those front windows with the blinds down the whole time. And then, um, yeah, and then we would just 
the, the back of the house we'd get light and we just used um, electricity to light the house. But um, we did have views out. It wasn't like we just boxed ourselves into this because that just wasn't um, appropriate for us at that time. And we couldn't see the deliverer since we had the right. front covered over. So, so we, that's how we minimize the distractions. Okay, menu planning. Again, the freedom of retreat comes from following a daily schedule. This applies to menu planning. Menus planned ahead of time frees the mind of the details of planning of what to do or not to do. Next. This results in an open, spacious feeling. And most interestingly, when something does not go as planned, such an unforeseen spoilage, or in longer retreats when something is missing in the grocery bags at delivery date, yeah. it does not seem so bad. <laughs> You'll know what to do. So for example, um, sometimes, the, the menu that you plan has to be really general and then you want to keep it consistent. This is for a longer retreat, you know, a month, two months. And just keep it really simple. And so, for example, we wouldn't say, okay, we're going to have um, Thai food this day and Mexican food the next day, and we didn't do it quite like that. We kept it more general, and that way, if something didn't show up, yeah. we had this basic skeleton that we followed, and then if there was a missing vegetable, um, it was okay because we just used what we had, and we'll go on and tell more about it here. Um, shopping for food. Shopping for food is easy for any retreat length up to 10 to 14 days because it can be done before retreat. With good menu planning and proper handling, some fresh produce can last in the fridge up to 14 days. For example, carrots, potatoes, cauliflower, tomatoes, and apples last longer in the fridge than lettuce, kale, chard, cilantro, and strawberries. You can extend the shelf life of greens by wrapping them in moist paper towels or cloth and keeping frozen produce on hand, such as peas and corn, the things that you like, um, helps in case of unforeseen spoilage. Also, it's good to keep extra canned goods or dry goods on hand, such as beans or pasta in the case of food shortages. You know, sometimes you might find that you eat more um, and other times you eat less. Sometimes things just don't make it into the grocery bag. So it's good to have these things. In addition, don't forget to have things like toilet paper, laundry soap, and medicine cabinet items well stocked. And that would include, um, you know, checking for expiration dates and things. Yeah. Any length over 14 days, for example, a 21 day or one month retreat, will require a bit more planning and help from the outside to do the shopping and the delivery of groceries. Arrangements for payment of groceries and grocery list should be made with the person who will be helping, and this should be done prior to retreat. For example, an envelope with the grocery list and money or check can be left on the door on the day date of delivery. Now, we realize that um, many of you live here in a bigger city, and um, it may be because of traffic or whatever, um, it would be hard for someone to come to your door, to maybe to come to the door and get that. So what you could do in that case is if someone will be driving long distance, because we had some people actually driving um, two and a half hours to deliver groceries to us. And so, um, what we would do is we would email the grocery list and the money to them so that they would have it. That way they wouldn't have to come all the way to the retreat house and then go all the way back out again to the grocery store. Um, so, and, and that would help in heavy traffic here in LA, I think. Um, okay. 
Again, it's good to keep extra food on hand in case you find that your grocery delivery bags are missing some items. Things happen in stores and sometimes they run out or they no longer carry an item. So when you make out your grocery list, also include appropriate substitute items. Knowing what to do in these situations will help decrease the shopper's stress. In addition, if you can list the shopping items in an order that naturally flows through the store layout, um, this will help the shopper get in and out of the store more quickly. And if you have a back door or a side door, grocery drop-off there would provide more privacy. That way after they drop off, um, you don't have to necessarily go out to the front door. But if there's no side door or back door, don't worry about it. We picked ours up on the front door and just went in, okay? Um, let's see, preparing food. Keeping recipes simple and nutritious. Rice cookers are amazing these days and are great for this. Using a rice cooker that comes with a steamer basket makes food prep very quick and easy. Yeah. And many have a timer to let you know when the food is done cooking. It's great, you can go and do what you need to do, meditate, study, contemplate, and you'll hear that and you know to come back. In addition, drink lots of water, very important. Um, also have cheese, nuts, or nut butters available because in longer retreats, you may experience increased energy. If it becomes extreme, you, and you feel like you're starting to get agitated, and it, it can happen, um, you, will, you, will, uh, you may need to eat meat, even if you're a vegetarian, something like chicken, in an extreme case. It, 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 and, um, and that's another reason why it's important to um, be in touch with whoever the person who's overseeing your retreat. You know, so if you're with someone, they can monitor that. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not, it would be really good to have someone to check in with and just recognize that. And you can talk to um, whoever's overseeing your retreat on what to look for. Um, cravings and diet changing, changes. Well, I'll let you start. Thank you. <laughs> I get to talk about the cravings and diet changes on a retreat. <laughs> cravings during retreat are common in longer retreats. Yeah, we wanted pizza real bad before. For the first <laughs> a couple three months, months, yeah. And we couldn't get it. They just, they just wouldn't bring it. <clears throat> it does no good when all that is, when all that is running through your head is, no, I can't do this. If I do, I'm not going to be disciplined or I want it, no, I can't have it. If I do, I'm not going to be disciplined because we're trying to meditate and study <laughs> because we're no longer focusing on the task at hand. So be kind to yourself. If you're used to drinking coffee, drink coffee. Uh, then get back to the task at hand. If you know you have a sweet tooth and like a chocolate cake, then make sure you've got a chocolate bar on hand. We had a little trouble with that. <laughs> When you want one, you want it, and it's not there, either cake or a bar. <laughs> not every person's the same. Ayurvedic medicine teaches that there are three doshas, or three categories of people, and a balanced diet for each. For the most part, we naturally follow what our dosha requires, and we can't just start ignoring our doshas because we are on retreat. In retreat, for example, to balance the three doshas, in general, pita, needs less salt and spicy foods, use oil sparingly, and exercise during the cooler parts of the day. Kapha needs to avoid or limit dairy, iced food, and food drinks, get plenty of exercise, and will need a variety of retreat. Vata needs to avoid or limit raw foods, eat cooked foods, and use more spices. And of course, we're opposites, so this that makes it a little bit harder, but we, we had to adjust because She's pita and I'm vada. I'm cold and she's hot. <laughs> so for my sake, we had to have some cooked foods and use more spices and, and keep our body warm and keep it routine. 
keeping health resource books on hand, I think this is one of the main keys I want to try to get across, is that there are two basic books, and I think maybe I talked to you about these books when, I, when you put us up years ago, 2008 and 2009 and 2010. <laughs> Marie helped, us, helped me get my Maroque. And um, the first book is, is a book that deals with all kinds of um, Ayurvedic home remedies. Anything you can come up with is in, is in this book. And it's, it's called The Complete Book of Ayurvedic Home Remedies. And it's by LAD, that's just L-A-D, um, would be very helpful in retreat. And one I found very helpful is one book on Chinese medicine. Now, there's a lot of people who study this for years and years and years, but I would recommend that if you haven't done anything in terms of Chinese medicine, this one book is, is just like gold. Um, it's, it's by two doctors, uh, Elias and um, Virginia Ketchum, and it's called Chinese Medicine for Maximum Immunity. And, and this book explains not just the doshas, but it, it explains the... Um, the Chinese elements, and uh, we found this is quite helpful because um, the um, the elements r relate to um, a lot of different subjects. Like some of you know what I do. <laughs> um, can I mention that or not? <laughs> not I, I would say starts with an A. I don't think. So. Okay. Okay. Anyways, we all have our <laughs> we, we all have our hobbies, and, and some of you know what my hobbies have been, and the Chinese medicine fit right in into that, and um, also they can fit into your religion, and um, so we, I, I found that those studying those Chinese elements were a big help, even though I hadn't done any work with them beforehand. But those Chinese elements helped in d determining that time cycles for what we did when and where. Um, I like to get up early, and um, Tammy did too. So by around six in the evenings, we started to move off of our activities and, and into thinking about sleep. And then sometimes I would get up even as early as two or three, and. Um, we, we eliminate a lot of the problems of having to worry about what do you do in the evening times. Um, and some of you who have, are going to miss things that you just have to do at night times uh, are going to find it. Well, for, for example, um, because there are these time periods, you'll find which time periods mm -hmm. work best for you. So, for example, for me, in the middle of the afternoon, when I first got into retreat between, uh, I believe it was between two and four, in that area, I was just, I just couldn't do anything. And the best thing for me, because that was a water time, the best thing for me to rejuvenate and everything was to just sit on the couch and breathe and just sit there and breathe and not try to force myself to do this or to do that because that would just make that situation worse. And so once I nurtured that for a while, then the energy of that started to change and I was able to do more things during that time. So just be really gentle with yourself and if that's something that interests you, it is really kind of interesting so that you're going more with the flow rather than trying to, oh, I was told that I need to do this, this, and this, and, and that sometimes creates some energy that it just, it, it works against you. So it's better kind of just meet yourself where you are, and, and, and it, 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 it transforms into something that's nice. And I, there is one thing here. I was going to mention that book again. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Um, ch Chinese medicine um, isn't something you need to study extensively, but this particular book is to deal with maximum immunity. And it's really so basic in terms of times of day and who's what and where. So it helped us. Um, and it also helps you with a variety of issues like your diet, exercise, breathing exercises, 
and all kinds of things that go with your own individual propensity. So um, I, I, I can highly recommend that book. It's by Elias, that's E-L-I-A-S, and Ketchum, K-E-T-C-H-A-M. In one book, you can get the whole, the whole business. Understanding that we are all different helps us with menu planning and scheduling our retreat activities. So in general, it's good to offer a variety of meal times when taking retreats with other people. Um, we worked flexibly with that, but we worked with a, a schedule, and that, that, that helps. If you're about it, you've got to eat on time. And um, mm -hmm. that was a, a, a big help. Okay, so in general, it's good to offer a variety at meal times when taking retreats with other people. So what that means, yeah, a variety of food because everyone's different. If you do want to make changes in diet, it's best to make changes before the retreat <laughs> and slowly over time. For example, if you want to avoid caffeinated beverages on retreat, then start drinking, for example, decaf coffee weeks before you go into retreat. <laughs> Some of this is real obvious, but um, they're important. Now a question of pets. Having a pet should not stop anyone from taking a spiritual retreat. You will have to decide. For longer retreats, pets can definitely be a cause of distraction from goals, your goals, and care of them, maybe outside of retreat boundaries. <laughs> keeping the pets in there is sometimes harder than keeping us in retreat boundaries. In these cases, you may want to have a trusted friend care for your pet um, or have them boarded someplace for the duration of your retreat. Bills and mail. Pay your bills ahead of time that aren't already set up on automatic payments. If you have a locked mailbox, mail can sit in your mailbox for a couple of days while on retreat. Otherwise, you will need to stop mail delivery, which is a good idea, for the duration of your retreat. Exercise is important and should enhance your spiritual practice. For example, some may find a brisk walk calming, while others need it to increase their alertness. Mm -hmm. In retreat, some people choose to do yoga, while others may prefer to do low-impact aerobics or dance. We kind of did all three. Some may find that they need brisk walks or calisthenics and stretching, while others would like a variety exercise program. The type of exercise you do will depend on your experience and the size and privacy of your home. Exercising in a private yard or on private grounds is appropriate. And of course, some of us exercise with machines in our houses. Again, if the exercise room in your house is a distraction for you, then close the door to that room for the duration of your retreat. House cleaning. She did cooking and I did the house cleaning. <laughs> house cleaning can also be a welcome distraction for some of us. So all house cleaning should be done before a retreat. This is on short retreats. If doing a longer retreat, routine cleaning, such as dusting and vacuuming, should be on the schedule along with who's doing the cooking and so forth. And if you're doing the house cleaning, you better keep on schedule. <laughs> you have to eat. You have to eat, but keeping the house clean is extremely important on retreat because you, you get a little bit more fussy especially your partner, can get a little more fussy if you're not cleaning the house. <laughs> and keep to the schedule along with who's doing the cooking. In our case, it was easy because she did the cooking and I washed the dishes. Again, having duties like these scheduled ahead of time will help prevent possible distraction while promoting a worry-free retreat or arguing over after you get into retreat. <laughs> Service staff. Those who may have nannies, service, or gardening staff have additional considerations. You will need to decide whether to include them in the retreat and let them know retreat terms or give them time off. Another idea, you can give them paid time off to do what they wish, maybe even take a retreat themselves. <laughs> Doctors and dentists. We did have need of a dentist. Schedule your retreats around doctor, dentist, and other appointments. If you have prescriptions, have them filled before entering retreat. Emergencies. Keep a list of names and emergency phone numbers for yourself 
And if you're using outside support, give a copy to the person who will be helping you. Decide before retreat whether you will use a cell phone or landline in case of emergency. If you choose to keep a cell phone, keep it charged but off during retreat. If you choose to use a landline, keep it unplugged but accessible. So finally, some common obstacles to retreat are don't have the money, don't have the time, don't know what to plan on a retreat, too many social commitments, don't want to leave the family, don't want to be silent, retreats are too restrictive. I think we've addressed how to overcome all these obstacles today. One last important note. After receiving instructions and practices from our teacher, Lama Marut, he gave two final, very compassionate advices before going into our retreat. And we want to pass them on to you. He said, Make the retreat your own and chillax. <laughs> <laughs> make the retreat your own means make it work for you. Make it the best time ever in your becoming another person. A person of peace, compassion, and wisdom. And at any time in retreat that you feel discouraged or you wish to leave retreat, remember why you're there, to benefit others. And just chillax. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's the end of our talk. Are there any questions? Chinese medicine from the 
So this is kind of an afterthought. It's good to have yeah. this because there's a lot of worrying goes on that didn't need yeah. to go on. Yeah, that was one thing we learned from retreat that I think that's really important to have something like that available to you. Just a few sentences to somebody can help you. Right. Because you start, you get a little bit more worried about things than you need right. to. Right. Because <laughs> you get so concentrated. Yeah. Yes. So how how did you start? Start with like a weekend retreat and then work yes. Yes, I, I've been doing retreats in my home actually. Um, and I've also done residential retreats. Um, For what, 20 years? Well, not quite that long, but Maybe probably 15 about, years. Yeah, yeah. about 10 years before oh. going into. Yeah. Oh, yeah, by Well, yourself. I did in group, but I also did retreats, if you really say alone, but yeah, in my home. And I've also done them with roommates. Yeah. That, that is you the biggest. You have to get rid of the TV. Well, Just you take can take it out of the house. You well, wait. <laughs> I'm now, serious. That, that's. There are some ways around that. Um, um, you can maybe get him to move to a computer where he can wear headphones and then move that into a room that can be shut, the door can be yeah. shut, the, a room that you don't necessarily have to go into, and then you can do what you need to do. Or, or maybe set mm -hmm. a two hour period that he yeah, can maybe. do that, but after that he's a no-no, and yeah. he's scheduled around what his favorite programs are and so forth. Yeah. D Right. And yeah. Well, you'd have to practice maybe a month ahead of time for that. 
because <laughs> some people psychologically need that noise, and um, would, to go on retreat and not have that noise might be more distracting for him than something else. So, um, so right, right. I think you can. St- Right. Yeah, mm-hmm. to start with a short one and do it, and you, you can make areas in your home that are off base, or are off limits. Mm-hmm. And, um, and as Tammy says, headphones work nicely. Yeah, be really, be really creative because it's better to go yeah. and do this for yourself and be creative and than to like try to stick to some rule at first, you know? And get back in touch with us because um, Tammy's writing a book, and that's something we'd like to know how a little bit more information. If you do it, yes, and let us know some feedback about how that works, because half the people where they're going to get the book have got that problem. Right. Yeah, but that would be enough to start with. And you build from that, you know, definitely, even if it's only a half a day, Mm -hmm. and you just build from that. Some of us can go cold turkey. I remember, um, it's kind of interesting actually, when I got rid of my TV is actually when I started doing retreats. And I I did just just straight cold turkey, got rid of the TV. And then I would just go to a movie once, maybe twice a week, but usually just once a week. But not everybody can do that. Some people need to be gently weaned off of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. We, we, we need some feedback on that one. <laughs> and everyone's different. Because the whole idea of this is to do it in your home because you keep the cost down. Right. And it's, it's efficient. It's much more efficient.
so I haven't adjusted myself to it. So um, I don't know what you're, who you are, what you practice, or whatever. But um, I, I, I think it would be interesting to try it for you just today, see what would happen with the dealing with the noise because. Um, it's the same people you hear all the time, and I mean, right. you know who it is. Right, right. So it's nothing strange. Yeah. And other dogs and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and babies. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, and that would be a real challenge. To, um, <laughs> I don't know what kind of religion or whatever. What, what's your, we have to ask for her background. <laughs> <laughs> This one, I know what that is, I got when you wrote here. <laughs> um, I think it's easier with, with this language because um, with the railroaders, I, I, I visualize the engineers. <laughs> and I'm doing a practice with those guys who are going around the clock, and right where we live, there's a steep drop down the mountains, and that, that they have one heck of a time, it's an enormous two mile drop. And I think of those engineers going down that drop. Well, one of our friends dated one of those engineers, who one of those trips had a heart attack. He didn't die, but it's pretty rough on the engine. So in a sense, I, I'm giving them some sense. I'm giving them something when they're going down there. But um, you, you, you've got neighbors who are living lives that I'm sure they're suffering, and uh, you could try maybe for a day just concentrating on the passing some of the things that your practice teaches you to some of the practices that you, you can get into. Yeah, at least try it for maybe a day. It's a, it's a trip for me, the engineers, because we had friends come over to help us move, and uh, they're both yoga teachers. And they, we got in there and then they heard the train and, and they just about lost it. We were just pulled. And, and they looked at me and says, you can't do this. And they, they didn't realize it's the rent we wanted. It wasn't the noise. Uh, our rent was so ridiculously low because it's a senior housing development. For us, we can afford it. And it means we don't have to get jobs. So. I'd rather have that noise and those trains going by and waving at those engineers and uh, <laughs> not have to go get a job. <laughs> yeah, I continue to practice. So you, you can adjust. I don't know what you do for a living, but um, if you want a retreat, would you have to go out of the house? Could, could you stay in the house? I could stay in the house. Yeah, I, I, I think you could experiment with it. And if you will, get back with us to tell you how you deal with the noise. Is that, that would be a, that, that. most people are in that boat. They don't have trains necessarily, but <laughs> they've got something worse than they And I might find that um, sometimes um, when I really concentrate, I don't even notice the trains. Mm -hmm. And then there's other times where it's like, ooh, I'm the way out of that. So um, it passes. I'm a complete novice at this, so please bear with me. Okay. I'm sorry, you're a I'm a complete novice at this, and it's hard for me to conceptualize. For example, you didn't have news or anything? None, 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 none. You don't want any. We didn't even know that. Who is it that died? Stephen Thomas. Who? Stephen Yeah, we didn't even know that Steve Jobs died. I guess that's a big deal. Um, but no, that's that's strictly a no, no, because um, you, you don't need any of that. You start becoming with your practice, especially if you're practicing compassion. The first thing you're going kind to of want to do is run out and help. Um, we had something funny happen towards the very end of our retreat. We were very fortunate; only three people knocked on the door. Um, the first person knocked. <laughs> 
And we could tell because they were out. They were, he was yelling for Steve. And so we knew that Steve was the landlord. I mean, we had just first got into retreat. So he had, Steve had not, um, you get really wise too. It's like, you know, okay, well, Steve didn't tell this man that he rented the place. So he, he left a note on the door and he went away. And um, that was fine. Then the second time someone knocked, it was late at night. And um, there are hunters who live in Kentucky. And um, this person was, um, again, it's so weird how we knew this, because we didn't see them do it, but we could just piece it together. Um, he obviously shot something from the road, probably a deer. And so he came to our door to ask permission, he was pounding on the door, and I knew he was asking permission to, um, you know, go on the property and retrieve the animal that he shot. We didn't answer that either, because um, we knew from, we were respecting our landlord's wish, which was that we don't go into those areas. So we let that go. Now, now towards the end of the tree, this one got a little more difficult for me. Um, uh, these t um, um, some banging and, and yelling, hello, is anybody home, anybody home? This is and it sounded frantic, so we actually peeked out. Because this sounded frantic, it sounded like someone might actually need help. We're on a very desolated um, road and everything. Um, so they were banging, we went all the way around, so we peeked out, and we stayed quiet, because we could tell that, it, but I wasn't sure, I actually started to rush to run out the door to help him. And he said, no, stay. And I did, I did, he said, I stayed. And um, the next thing we saw, because I was like, well, what are they doing? They took a crowbar out of their trunk and went to the door, and took it to the door. <laughs> and not to scare you or anything, but Morgan, he did use a very strong voice and asked what they wanted. And to scare them to death. Because they sound like I am old enough, but I sound twice as old. Yeah. And they thought I had a shotgun, I'm sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> in Kentucky, I mean, would have. I guess you're allowed to have a shotgun. <laughs> so um, they asked, they asked a very strange question. He was rattled, so he says, are there any police living near here? Oh. <laughs> and so Morgan said, in his wisdom, said, yes. And so they got back in the car and left. And then Tammy's, I can't believe this, she is so perceptive. She was able to see this long distance and got the license number. So we called the dispatcher for the county. And they rounded this guy up not long after that. This two guys have been doing how we call them do houses, robbing, robbing houses, and, you know, and a whole bunch of houses. What do you call that? A series of robberies. I mean, there's a name for that. Vandalizing houses. I guess you know. they, they had a. We we're doing the whole town, and we weren't in town. We were way off of it. But they think we're filming this because it didn't look like anybody lived there. Because we don't want the car and have no cars around. And, Eight miles around, no houses. We were a nice setup. So they were just ready to go. I'm looking at the hole at them, just waiting. And she's trying to get out the back door, so I'm trying to get her to no, you get back in here. But my, my point is, it's very, very distracting. So television is, 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 is that, that's really no, no, or any kind of communications. We had three things in three years, so I mean, that wasn't distracting, it was more or less fun than getting looked back on. Um, you, you don't have to be a big, I don't know how you said you're new at this or something. Novice. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think you're a novice at this, um, because um, just to even spend one day away from the normal media that you're involved with is, is, is soul satisfying. I mean, and, and the 
more you get of that, the better, I think. I mean, regardless of what, what kind of situation you're in, uh, just to cut yourself off from all of that uh, is, is a plus. You just, in your case, can you do a whole weekend? Oh, I'm sure I could. I'm like that. You said what? Oh, oh, well. I'm involved in some other things. What are you saying? He's involved in some Which means we'll keep you from doing a retreat. Well, I won't let it keep me from doing oh, a retreat after this. Good, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because um, it's extremely beneficial. Because one thing, when you come out, which we're just going through now, you get a perspective on what everybody else is doing. And as Tammy says, she had much more compassion when she came out because she could see where we do things were like going in and then what they're like coming out. And we had such a quiet time in between that um, we're extremely offended by what we find when we come out. We have more compassion. And that break in there kind of gives you a much cleaner insight of what's going on. Even if you just took two or three days just to get away from it and then come out, uh, you're a wiser person, I think. Can you give some insight on how you do come out of a long retreat? Well, I don't think that's a problem. They, they try to make such a big deal out of that. And I'll tell you why. It's because um, Tammy planned ahead of time the, the, the nicest, nicest banquet for a luncheon banquet for all the people that did the retreat. The local The servers. And, and so we met all of them and um, here out just for about seven days. It took as long as we planned. And um, in fact, I hadn't seen my sister for I don't know how many years. And, I mean, my boy came. I mean, the people that service came, and um, it was kind of um, a gestalt or a, a finishing of, of everything. And so it gave us such a boost that um, I, I didn't get that trauma you're supposed to have when you come out because we weren't doing anything in retreat to get trauma. <laughs> right, and I, I think we, it's overdone. We were a little bit nervous because of the things we heard about doing that on the retreat. So um, about two months prior to going out of retreat, we had a trusted server who um, we actually had them come into retreat with us and spend, I think, maybe two or three days at a different time throughout the, the two months to kind of um, help us transition. Um, but we found that, um, I don't know if it was really necessary, but we were trying to be sensitive to um, what we had heard and we wanted to transition in a way that would, would be conducive to moving forward. Um, and they respected the retreat. Yes, they were very they respected respectful. The we already um, talked to them about how it was going to be and why we were doing it, and, and they were very helpful in that. Yeah, that's um, why. The hardest okay. thing, I think, coming out of retreat, um, I think we did a great job going into retreat, getting it planned, getting the help of all the organization. She did this um, we, we did a great job on that, but I had to think about coming out of retreat, and um, <clears throat> the, the hardest thing I think for us was that we didn't have housing planned yeah, for when we come out. out. So if you're in your oh, own house, house <laughs> it's not an issue, but if you do decide to do it in another house, um, I think it's really important to have your housing yeah. for the really long retreats, to have your housing planned. So we put ourselves in real stress. Unnecessary stress. Yeah, yeah we didn't need that. So we had about three weeks of, or three months of stress. But I'm sorry, but it intensified our practice. Yes. <laughs> and so yes. 
I'll swear to you, those three months, I learned, uh, I don't want to how to measure it, but um, stuff we've been learning, you can't put into practice right away. Mm -hmm. That was not that. Need to be nurse made it out of it. Uh, I think we were just thrown into. The, the reason was that we we planned the retreat on a, a low budget because we were just living off the Social Security, which isn't very much in our case. And um, we couldn't stay in Kentucky because they just don't have services for people, and that's not reasonable. So Tammy, um, I knew my sister at the time, who is well to do had moved to Asheville, Kentucky, or North Carolina, and was raving about that. And she came to, of course, she was one of our servers in a lot of ways. Oh. And um, so we investigated Asheville. We found that they got all these services and medical and everything. I mean, we're just sitting pretty. And um, all these different places for housing. And so um, we were going to go there, but we didn't have any place to go when we got there. And so um, we, en we ended up getting on the, what is it called, Craigslist, and we found somebody who was advertising for a roommate. And so the, the two of us joined her, and she asked us if we liked dogs. And we said, yeah, we don't mind about dogs. Well, it turns out she had three dogs, and one was, what do you call it, incontinent? And so, <laughs> so I mean, we had some three bad months. <laughs> but it was perfect for practice. Oh my gosh, you don't learn in patience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, so I guess the answer, who, who asked the question? Um, but now we've talked to other retreatants who, they were just spaced out for two months and just, oh, I can't deal with all this. But I don't know what they were doing in retreat, frankly, to come out like that because uh, it's, 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 it's exhilarating, even if you just take a day off. Um, if nothing else, it's rest. You, you go to sleep at the right time, you get up at the right time, and you have nothing to worry about. And, and for heaven's sake, don't have a cell phone or any phone contact or email contact. I mean, you, you just cut that off because we were surprised we got on an airplane to come here because um, Lama Root paid for us to come here and make us these two speeches. and. Um, Everybody sat on the plane looking at a, wait, what do we call them? Tablets. A tablets. Nobody talked. And that's a whole new thing. When we went in, they didn't do that when we went in the street. <laughs> you got on an airplane five years ago. Four, it's noise. Everybody's raising cane and everybody's looking at their tablet. <laughs> so um, I don't know why I brought that up, but it's... It's, it's changes that we... We got to experience. Yeah, and so get away from your tablet. If, if you, have, you know what that, I don't know what that is yet, but he told me it's called a tablet. Yeah, so we have new language to learn and new technology. And, and that's incredible in three years that everybody's got their face in something. And then you got a screen on this plane, you got a screen right in front of you, right, not up there, but right there in front of you. And everybody's got one, so you can't help but see their movie and the one that you're not trying to watch. And I mean, it's just, so I, I can't say too strongly, you, you want to stay out of a, any kind of m media like that. You answer the next one, I'm talking to you. Right? Yes, okay, this is great. Yeah, great that's question. the best question. Um, you got to be crazy. The first three <laughs> months <laughs> were the hardest for us, and thank goodness we did not have a car. We don't own one, we didn't have one, it was yeah. a blessing. Yeah, and you couldn't get a taxi. You couldn't get anything. I thought about it. Okay. Let's oh get yeah. A taxi. yeah. We couldn't get taxis there. There's no taxis yeah. there. We and were. It, it was perfect for us. But the first three months, I think, are the hardest. And I think um, that's also when the I think the most cravings came up because yeah. you're just used to a certain lifestyle. I mean, um, we had already been practicing a retreat lifestyle before we went in, but we still had access to Starbucks and. Pizza, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> all these things, and then you go in, and, and and it's really amazing how all of a sudden, you know, all we could think about was pizza and I mocha. Pizza. 
Pizza. That not so much. Well, me. Because yeah. I could make him one. Yeah, she eventually learned to make something that but, was just as good. But pizza. And she learned to make pizza after three yeah, months. Yeah, no, <laughs> it was more like a year and a uh, half. Oh, it was longer, retreat. I guess. Yeah. Um, when the craving was actually no longer an issue, all of a sudden, wow, I can make this in a pan, and so it was really fun. In order to save money, we didn't use propane. You mean we didn't use the oven? The oven, yeah. which required propane, so we didn't use an oven. Yeah, so we she just did all this cooking without an oven, which that was incredible. Mm -hmm. And the book she we're writing is going to tell you how to deal with recipes and the problems like that, which w would help any of you that happen to not have a lot of money. Um, w she was able to do a lot of things with things that she created, new recipes and new things that. I, th I think are worthwhile getting into. Right. She's good. Yes. Wait, did, did we answer, answer that strongly answer? enough? No, yeah, oh, what was his question well, again? What, what kept you in? I mean, oh, okay. Oh, what, yes, what kept us in um, was that we were doing it for others. That's what kept us in, Bodhicitta, I think. Yeah, it, it's, um, of course, I was 77 years old, so um, it's easy for me to do, I don't know who's here, what's what, but there are different religions that celebrate death in different ways, and um, it was easy for me to concentrate, because this might be the last time I'd be able to, um, I mean, I'm, I wasn't going to be able to plan retreats on up the line, so better make this worthwhile, if that makes any sense. And, if I was younger, I don't know. I maybe wanted to bolt out quicker, but uh, there. But um, I, I, I think you, you um, if you're over 50 years old, and we're both over 50, um, you um, you look at your lifespan and, and time schedule and so forth, and it, it's time. To, like in your case, it's it's time to do this. I mean, it's time to let some things go aside and get get into figuring out who you are and what you're doing and so forth. So I, I think purpose would be the answer to that. The purpose wasn't to do practices or to do this stuff scheduled. Purposes was to figure out who I am, where I am, why, <laughs> and do I want to even, now there's those kind of basic questions. And so I, I would think that th th they keep you in there. Do you feel like you're closer to the answer now that you've done the retreat? Yeah, I got the total answer. <laughs> Because we're going to stay a couple years in Asheville, and we're going on another three-year retreat. We're planning now for the next three-year retreat. So, yeah, I know our purpose is getting retreat. <laughs> Does that make any sense? And it's a whole different life. You answer a question now, then he's, he's got a question. We had propane. We had propane. Right. We and just didn't want to use it for an oven. And we used a rice cooker. Is that electric? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah had we had propane and electric. Not like Sal. <laughs> but we were, because the oven was on propane, <laughs> yeah. we, we, um, we were trying to be conservative because we did have a budget um, with uh, our income and then um, scholarship monies that we received. So to be respectful of that budget, um, we knew um, to make some sacrifices. And we decided the oven was going to be the sacrifice. And it was fine. Yeah. I'd like to say one more thing to him. Yeah. Um, that there's no reason you have to stay in retreat, really. They make such a big thing out of this. But um, if you're afraid to go on one of these, there's no reason why you can't get in it and quit. You better have a car, of course, or have friends. <laughs> but th there is no reason to postpone doing something like this for a, a, something like that, because um, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, if um, you, you want to do it, even, say, a month, and after a week you can't take any more of it, um, that's, that's, that's no problem, the very fact you did what you did. The key is, is to get into what is called retreat, and you'll figure it out. So I wouldn't worry about, I don't think it, it's 
they make too big a deal about that, about you have to do this, you have to do that. And uh, our Lama told us, it's your retreat. You, you do what you want to do. And I say that to you too, D do it. Are you Tony, aren't you? Oh my God, I'm so glad to see you here. A <laughs> couple of us stayed at his house too. Yeah, thank you for putting David and White and me. I mean, you guys are why we can be up here now because you gave us housing. Say that question again. Were we in touch sure. with him? Were we in touch Ooh. with Diamond I, I, Mountain? With, with, with the others with Diamond Mountain or all okay. the um, connection during yeah. Definitely. Yeah. We went in a month earlier. So on the day that we knew they were going in, we thought of them. Mm -hmm. And we came out a month earlier. So um, the day they came out, we thought of them. Um, it's interesting in retreat. Um, even though you're doing your practices and everything, there's always times where you do think about others because mm -hmm. that's why you're in there in the first place. And um, it was neat to know, even though we did it separately because uh, we had a commitment, we really we, we did this retreat because we really wanted to prove that it could be done in a home to really remove mm -hmm. a lot of obstacles so that everyone can have an opportunity to do this. And so even though we didn't participate with them, we felt like we were still part of that big, amazing event. Yeah. Yeah. And we couldn't afford something like that either. Right. There was just so, no way. And we're glad we did it this way because we want to share with everybody that you don't have to have means to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if that's an obstacle. Yeah. Yes. And like Stefan lived with... With, you know, with, I'm, just a second, I want to say Stefan, you know, live with you. But mm -hmm. We live with Stefan, and I knew Stefan was in this retreat. And his partner, who was in China, that we called when we were staying with you. I mean, you, you got to think about this. Both of them were in that retreat in Diamond Mountain. And um, a couple of my students were in it, they were students of mine in Cincinnati. So I think about those guys around. I even dream about them. So, yeah, you, you, you don't lose. We didn't lose track of um, David White. Thought about him all the time. He wasn't on retreat, mm -hmm. but um, and Terry. Yeah, and the whole the whole Terry. Diamond Mountain we crew. I, I spent time up there as the whole that term. We knew. So, mm -hmm. and I did all their. Well, you know what I do? My hobby. I did all their. Um, you know what? So I knew them all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I knew them all, I mean, they were, because I spent a whole term there, and um, so yeah, they're, they're all in my heart. Were there any doubts? About, about what? About? Going in? No, you were in like, why am I here? It just those doubts that came in, or like it's such a nice day, but I can't go in Japan, and get a mocha, and... Um, oh yeah, first three months. Um, I think we all have doubts as we're learning, and um, as uh, and it fluctuates. Because, for example, going into retreat, I was so headstrong; there was no doubt in my mind. An that Irish that woman. Was, I mean, even the servers, the sweet servers. You know, one this couple who was going to be primarily bringing our food, they were so worried that something was going to happen and they were going to have to feed us acorns and i'm like no give you me know a break. that's an obstacle to retreat slap it down we're moving forward yeah, but they were really you know these concerns they were very real for them and um so it fluctuated so when we got in retreat even though we wanted to stay in retreat we wanted to go out for the first three months. We wanted to just go out and then come back in. But um, well, you, you need to stay, you stay if you can. And, and um, let's see. What, what? In our case, we wanted to, but yeah. you, you, we could have broken the retreat and, and not been dying or something about it, but we were both committed to, to doing this thing. And right. 
So it, it can fluctuate and you have to just kind of write it out the best you can and think about why you're there and did somebody have a question yeah. over here because she's yeah. I don't know who was first did, did, did you ask a few minutes ago uh, I mean I had a question earlier that wasn't answered oh it was I, I, oh Terry I think, oh okay, okay. okay I'm sorry thank you. No. And you the That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. This is what we did. We, we set up um, what would be called retreat boundary. And um, we decided that for us, and since the road was fairly um, untraveled, um, we made a, we knew we would not go beyond the tree on this side of the house. <laughs> And we not, would not go beyond the barn, which was what, 300 feet? Maybe 300 yards. 300 yards, say. that direction. And so for one of our exercises would be to just go back and forth, back and forth. And then, you know, if we really wanted to get crazy, you know, we went around the house <laughs> and then around the other way. But that, we stuck to that the whole time. And that was amazing, actually. Did you have snow? Oh, yeah, we no. had snow. Um, and but uh, they have good road removal of snow in Kentucky. They don't have hospitals yeah. and stuff, but they keep the roads. Yes. And yeah, so they do. Did you have people that cleared like a walkway for you? Oh, no, no, I no, did no that. she did that. I did that. I made sure because I, you know, when you're on retreat, and, and like I said, we do think about the people. I was right out there when it snowed. I made yeah. sure I got right out there early, shoveled it, and if I knew it was the week that the servers were coming, I put the salt down. Yeah. I worried about, you know, um, anybody who, cause sometimes we got surprise drop-offs, you know, somebody yeah. would leave something on her. So I made sure that that walkway was always cleared for, for safety reasons and for my husband's safety reasons. So I didn't fall down and break my fall. hip. Yeah, so we did everything in that way. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh about that, but yeah, you, you did a nice job of that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't break. And anything. one time we did lose electricity. This is funny. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's um. Winter time. Yeah, and we lost heat. electricity for two days, and anything everything we had in the freezer we went and buried in the snow. <laughs> and then we got in bed and just like all these clothes, all these hats. You didn't come out of bed. Yeah, for like two days. Yeah, it was, it was, it was And fun. then the lightning, <laughs> at one point lightning struck the house and knocked out the computer for good. Yeah, and so we things were, do happen. We were lucky. My, my boy brought, gave us the money and bought new, one. So we, we got a new, new computer. computer for us. He was kind of in charge of the whole thing from... Columbus, which is in another state, but he's kind of backing us up if we had too many problems. And yeah, yeah, it's he, good to have. He a made a few deliveries, but basically one, one fellow made the made the deliveries every two weeks, and we were so indebted to him. Yeah, that was pretty amazing dedication. Yeah. Did you say okay. text? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got a mirror. Okay. Yeah. No, no, wait, wait. Well, first of all, um, we, uh, it was my understanding we were doing a talk to a very open um, audience. And so um, the text that you study need to be text that your, your spiritual guide has asked you to study. And so, um, you know, because there are different traditions, um, those texts may be different. And we would be happy to talk with you afterwards. Yeah, we'll give you the but, whole work. <laughs> but and, and we're and not allowed not, yeah. to give it out because we don't know what, what, 
whether yeah. you're Muslims so, or whether you're Christians uh -huh. or right. a rabbi. And, right. I mean, we have so no idea. So you need to study because your your <laughs> your teacher, whoever the spiritual guide is for you, will know what you need yeah, to yeah. help you with that question. But we'd love to answer it. So we'll 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 give you a list of whatever you want yeah. forever. I mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, you, you you're on. But we have to do it. The new thing now is um, you do it privately. That's the key word now. <laughs> <laughs> there's, yeah, there's no, um, there used to be a thing called, um, I, I was a Christian minister when I was 21 years old, so I'm, I'm in good company regardless of which religion you're into. But, um, I was going to say about that. Oh, well, I'm not that bad. Okay. okay. All right, well, thanks to everybody for coming. Um, please remember donation days. You can give to the Noble Association to do so. Um, so. Now, this is for the center, incidentally, not for us. Yeah. We, we yeah. want to see yeah. the center yeah. get some money out of this because. Uh, this yeah. And we, we spoke at Lama Roots retreat yeah. before, just before we just came here, so. Oh, I have a few questions for now. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, oh definitely. Thank you. thank you for having us.